Dear Diary, we need to talk. It's been a while. I've been ill. It's been very, 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 very cold. I had my stepson over for five days. I just had my son two weekends in a row. So that's basically Thursday to Monday twice. I haven't had much gap to do stuff in between. Especially last week being ill and cold and having my stepson here too, who was homeless um, and wouldn't have been very nice if he had been homeless during that very cold spell. He probably would have died because he was ill. So that's all good that he's not, <laughs> that he's fine. And uh, snow is melting and the sun is coming out and that's all good too. Uh, I'm in much need of a bath. Um, but I needed to talk to you. I am the son of man. Get over it. <laughs> Get used to it. Uh, things have been interesting. It's, uh, since I made those videos about AJ Miller and I've like, cast him off, um, I was thinking again about the, the, uh, the, the, the process of the Christ, if you like, what, what God did, was it, was it the, say, take Mary and Joseph, did they do the business, and, and then God just sort of adapted the, the result a bit, felt the conclusion that, no, uh, Mary, it would have been, um, what do they call it, when the divine conception or whatever that maybe God made the sperm that went into Mary's egg. Anyway, so that's what I've been thinking about myself. And um, it's quite challenging. And I'm not, I'm not bothering myself about it too much, but it was a question that kept coming up. It just sort of kept propping up like the truth does. And, you know, maybe I will, after going along this path for a while, realise, no, no, I'm wrong, of course. My biological dad was my real dad and everything like that. And... But, for the moment, I'm keeping it open that um, the only DNA I got was from my mother and whatever God made. There we go. Say no. <laughs> hey, that killed it, didn't it? I've been I've been dreaming about it nearly every night. Like thinking about it in my dreams, it's quite odd. But. Even yesterday, in fact, sitting there meditating, and I was thinking, you know, done this a gazillion times before, just execute the DNA that's in me. And um, things sort of were happening. I've been getting really frustrated with uh, the BBC mainly, well, YouTube, YouTube, getting a little bit out of YouTube but not much, there's not a lot I'm listening on, on YouTube at the moment, 
Um, but listening to the BBC and the, the world affairs and stuff like that, um, I'm finding myself easily frustrated. But then I, I have to think, oh, come on. Look, like, so someone's talking on the radio, maybe they're saying something I don't like. So I say to them, right, reach in deep, feel that person's soul, they were a child once. You know, they're, they're only saying what they think, you know, and they're sort of able to forgive them. But like the Europeans, man, they're really doing my nut. <laughs> Michelle Barnier and his European Commission. I can't believe they've got away with this up to this point. I can't believe that they haven't been questioned. This un... I mean, Nigel Farage has been going on about it forever, 15 years as far as I know. About how they're... It's completely non-democratic. The European Commission. And none of them are voted in. Why are we tolerating this? Why are we even accepting it? We're supposed to be a democracy. I mean, I'm so glad we're coming out. The rest of Europe need to sort their stuff out. How is that? How is it possible? Club of Rome. Brussels. Brussels used to be known as Flanders. Interesting. Lee? I think or not. Um, well, and then Trump does something which cheers me up, you know. And, Says, okay, he's going to have a tax on steel imports. And then the Europeans pipe up, oh, that's not very good. We don't want protectionism. Oh, maybe we will put a tax on your Harley Davidsons. <laughs> what idiots. I mean, I don't think many Harley Davidsons are probably sold. So then Trump just comes back and says, right, well, we'll put a tax on all the cars that come over then. Brilliant. Brilliant. And enough of this China shit. Xi Jinping, come suck my bollocks. I'm not scared of you and your tight grip. You haven't even got God. Don't tell us where is your God. I tell you, you're going to find out. You are going to find out. To everything like Taiwan, I love Taiwan. Here we go, I love Taiwan. They used to make Action Man. Action Man was brilliant. It was quality. I mean, the, the, the detail, the scar on the face, the moving eyes, the skin tone. You had one with dark black hair, and he had like a reddish face, which is completely true to form. And you had one guy with blonde hair, and he had a nice tan face. Completely true to form. These are the sort of things you see. It was realistic. The Action Man was really, really hard to break. Now you buy toys made in China, cheap shit, break, cheap fucking plastic shit. And while I'm having a go, fuck YouTube too. Fuck you, YouTube. Do you know what they, you know, they're, they're clever, right? They're clever and fair enough. They monopolised this medium of video thing. Making me feel that I could potentially speak to the whole world. Well, yeah, right. YouTube recommends what it recommends. Uh, they're clever. They got the monopoly and they're clever. And they can promote who they want. And most of what gets promoted is just a load of crap. And okay, most people just want to watch a load of crap. That's fair enough, I understand that. It's not all YouTube. But fuck you, YouTube. Because you just... Although, yeah, you had all this hard drive space, and yeah, I wouldn't really be able to upload my videos onto my own website, because uh, it would just cost a fortune. Okay, fair.
fair enough. I accept that. But if there wasn't room for you, if there wasn't room for video, I'd do audio or something. So, you know, there'd be a way around it. So, um, yeah, so fuck China, fuck YouTube. I mean, there's no way, no way we're going to accept the type, type of totalitarian rule that you have over there. No fucking way. And I'm sick of all the cheap shit. Right, you don't take our rubbish back anymore. And I don't see why you should anyway. I mean, that wasn't my idea. But pretty much you were just sending shit over here, breaking, and we're sending it back to you. Basically, that's what it is. Taiwan was making some awesome stuff. Dare you just tell the whole world that we have to ignore Taiwan? No way. I mean, it would be it would be interesting if you know the, they tried to make this country and others that have been used to being able to do what they want. If we suddenly had to, you know, line up every morning on parole, parade or whatever and receive our rations and... I mean, in a way, it'd be quite fun, but... Yeah, it's not... This brings us back, what, what is civilization? It's not fucking art, is it? I mean, that's art, I, my painting. You just sit there and stare at it. I mean, that's not life, is it? Just sit there and stare at art. <laughs> my life is sit there and feel my heart. But don't forget my head. Yeah, I, I've, I've had, I've, I don't know what my eyes are like now, but I've had some spirits with me. Since probably since the AJ Miller is the Antichrist videos, and I I do suspect that there's a is his spirit friends perhaps or something like that, because obviously if I've come out saying AJ Miller is the Antichrist, they they have an investment in seeing that my law of attraction doesn't go well, don't they? So, you know, they might set a few of their so-called friends over to try and fuck things up for me. And, um, well, it ain't gonna work. It ain't gonna work. The world has changed. It's not going to change back. So So, it's all good, it's all good, it's coming good, um, we males have a, about a week left of our moon going down so we've gone past what are we on? waxing so yeah by March the 9th we'll be like that 
and men will be coming back up and this is the time this is the time that the son of man he is it's all pointing towards that it's, I think it's been a hard hearing a lot about this dark night of the soul I'm not really quite sure what they mean about that because it's it's so, certainly not just one night you don't just have one one bad night I think what they're on about is you know r realizing that the errors that once you discover truth you realize the errors that have been and you know, they just need some repair time but I think it's happening to people in their youth and when you hit your twenties it's a very very strange time anyway it's very peculiar um, going from 18, 19, 20, 21 making that transition uh, into an adult and you're not really an adult when you're 21 but you're kind of you know, a new stage, and um, that's a very funny time anyway. So if you're waking up at that, in you're in that age group, you know, it's probably going to be even stranger. And I remember being 20, and I remember thinking, why didn't someone tell me that I was going to have some very, very weird, strange days? <laughs> and I suppose they probably didn't tell me because it'd be too hard to explain, or. I thought my younger brother was going to go through the exact same thing, but he didn't seem to, so... I don't know. Anyway. Um, the main thing is that people are waking up. And uh, that's good. And obviously you have to be careful not to just sort of just look at YouTube and think, oh, that's everybody, because it's not, is it? You know still most people are not on YouTube and again fuck you YouTube you monopolized it so you can control it and it, you know just beware air uh, air uh, beware they're all there's all these wolves in sheep's clothing they're everywhere so YouTube are wolf in sheep's clothing the National Health Service uh, a wolf in sheep's clothing they have to do some good things to maintain the sheep's clothing. That is the sheep's clothing. That is the good things they do. But underneath the surface, where you don't see, not in the public eye, is the wolf. Is the absolute nastiness. I mean, all these toffs who think life is about staring at a fucking painting, right? They are still the ones who have their hands on the power. And they, they look at people, poor people, as basically, you know, just rats or just, you know, just, just things that don't matter. You know, they'll, they'll write people off and all this. They're just full of shit. You know, they, charity. You know they're they're doing so well that they can they can give loads of money to charity or people are going to go and work for charity. I, I, I become the CEO of this charity and uh, yeah you know so so I'm doing good for the world, aren't I? But you know, I mean actually good. The BBC, the fucking gay Jew lot, they are looking at charities this week, uh, Friday I think. And asking, you know, why, why all these charities? You know, they seem to just put all their efforts into growing and becoming bigger. You know, that's that's not what they should be about. They just, you know, obviously they get they get their tax uh, tax rebates because they're a charity, so they can they're more likely to be able to stay afloat. Because 
you know, there's what new and exciting is going on that a young person can go out there and say, I want to be a... I want to be a... a... an astronaut? Or oh, forget that, mate, you ain't got no chance. Uh, I want to be a fighter pilot. Lucky, if you're lucky, you might. You might get to be one of the men who waves the things around or you know, remove the stocks. If you haven't got, you know, if you haven't got the right family and you haven't go to the right school, knowing the right people, you know, you you've got little chance of having any influence at all. And the these people with the jobs, they probably just haven't got a clue. At all, they just want to carry on the status quo. That's how it's always. Let's go back to the Roger Bannister days, you know. I mean, yes, he was a bowl of porridge in the morning, and then I went and did my shift at the hospital, and then I got on the train up to Ifley Road, and yes, I ran round the track in less than four minutes. Whippity doodah day. Whoopity fucking doodah day. You think he was the first man to run a mile in less than four minutes? You reckon? I don't reckon. I reckon 14 year old boy did it when he was running from a dog. <laughs> or a bull. Or he was running home because he thought he was going to shit his pants or whatever, yeah? Alright? Go. And I have to keep thinking as well, like it's all part of God's plan. Is this why I think we're here in this situation? I think people talking about dark night of the soul. I think, I think we're in this time where it's been, you know, um, they know the time is short. That we're, we're very, very close to this something that's just going to upend everything. And... Um, and um, so it's sort of we're in this calm before the storm, the, 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 the darkest time is just before dawn or whatever. And, uh, you know, that, that's where we are. That's what I think is actually going on. So, it should give us a little bit of hope. And, uh, Stick with if you've got any feelings of faith, keep keep them going. We need to get real. We need to get real. We can't carry on with this way of, uh, well, again, it's the jobs and the purpose, and it's, and it, it, and it's the results of people getting what they need. Food, shelter, warmth, community. And we've got to move towards self-sustainability. You know, those communities, every, every country in the world should divide up into small communities and those communities be given the land they require to grow the food and the trees to be self-sustainable. And we can make stuff out of wood. You can make nearly anything out of wood. Um, there's lots of different types of trees that suit you for different things. You can make rope, you can make spoons and bowls, you can make boats, cool. You can make anything out of wood. We don't need to get all scientific about it. I mean, well, yeah, you know, you know I mean, 
we don't know what science may answer next, right? I mean, I suppose they've got this new graphene thing they're talking about. Two layers of, just two atoms thick of carbon apparently can stop a bullet. There's probably, I mean, I think there's so much bullshit out there. I mean, quantum computing is just bullshit. It doesn't work. If there's, there are lots of universes out there, that is true. But they're not parallel universes that we can draw all the energy from. Like, you know, you've got a parallel Earth. Well, let's take the oil out of the other Earth so that we still have the oil in our... I mean, it's just ridiculous. I mean, how can... This is why I mean. All these people have been going to university. We've got record numbers of people going to universities. Where are they? With their all clever solutions to all these problems that we're facing. They're, they're silent. Because they don't know. The reason they don't know is they don't know how to think for themselves. Because they've been institutionalised. You go to university, you spent that long in school. They do this thing at university where they let you have a year of fun. Maybe even two years of fun before you have to actually sit down and properly do some work. They become institutionalised. They become indebted to the state. They feel indebted to the state. Oh yeah, we're lucky, we can get this nice, well-paid job. Um, you know, decent car, decent house. You're, you're in debt to your neck, uh, pretty much, probably for the rest of your life. And, you know, there's still that big tax bill you have to pay. So, I mean, you're not actually better off, you just think you are. You act like you are. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're professionals. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've got two children. Yeah, we're professionals. Yeah, nice house, nice car. Yeah, yeah. But probably less happy just drinking yourselves to, to death to kill all the brain cells so you don't have to think. Well, I suppose that's just a bit of a rant. But everybody is good inside and, you know, one of these things about the people who are waking up and seeing the truth is, it is, you know, it is challenging to feel the results of all the errors going on and frustrating because you, you'd like to be able to try and change it, but you know, what, what can you, what can I, what can I do, what can I do? I could uh, f phone up my local MP and go and see her on a Friday and, and say to her like, you know, do you want the world, do you want this country to, to be in a better state? Like, do, do you want mental health to be uh, improved? or even cured because it you know you can you can ban pharmaceuticals because they're not doing any good and you can start to actually look at the causes of mental health and and see actually that people with autism and Tourette's and and ADHD and stuff are just struggling to fit in with your bullshit society because deep down in their soul, they know better. And they're actually being more loyal and sticking with their, what their soul feels than just doing whatever it takes to fit in with society. But you can't have, like we, we're so used to having a two-tier system where you've got the toffs at the top, who have all the cushy jobs and all the power and decision making, and then you have the workers, the minions, <coughs> you know, who at the moment are just being, are just being robbed left here, there and centre, you know, they, they got to slave their day away, um, uh, pollution in the air and polluted water 
and polluted food and toxic medicines and brainwashing brainwashed brainwashed to put toothpaste in our mouth um, you know this was a real clever thing I mean my childhood I grew up you know go to the dentist every six months and get a sticker and yeah you know keep on using toothpaste and get that toothpaste in there and brush your teeth twice a day you don't forget the toothpaste right big flat oh lovely mint taste of oh, mint oh, mint is calming isn't it feel nice and calm after I brush my teeth then <sighs> oh god fresh breath after my teeth but the fucking toxins you're putting in there is calcifying my pineal gland and I'm gonna get dementia or Alzheimer's when I'm old because I've got all this toothpaste not to mention osteoporosis because my bones will break if I fall over because fluoride it makes bones grow quicker but more brittle and dentists they don't even know about enamel teeth they still don't understand teeth and enamel in this day and age where we're supposed to know everything and but we don't even know about our own teeth yet that's what creates enamel it's the actual clashing together of the teeth or on hard objects that actually creates enamel but it's still not understood by scientific, even though these dentists are supposed to go to university for seven years. Oh, I don't hear many kids say, oh, I want to grow up and be a dentist. You know, it's funny, that, isn't it? It's usually like a doctor, isn't it? Well, I guess that, you know, there are a few people who, like, a couple of years into medical school, maybe get told, look, you're not really cut out for this. But you could do dentistry. It's a good living. It's, you know, you're looking into people's mouths, but hey, you know, you get help, nurse, whatever, good wage. You know, you're not cut out to be a doctor, but you could be a dentist. I think that's probably how people become dentists. No, I don't mean to have it. I'm not having a go at the individuals. I'm having a go at the, the way society is set up. And I'm getting pissed off with the media because I want it to change. But again, like this is the thing about YouTube and the media, I was just thinking, they decide what is projected. You know, the BBC Radio 4, you know, when, when there's something they want people to, to listen to, you know, they'll put a little ad about it, you know, a week earlier, next week, oh, we're doing this, talking about this, it's going to be really interesting. You know, they put all this forward. Uh, maybe they're hyping on about um, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and what a great thing that was and how fantastic it, it would be. I, it's almost people think that they would prefer this reality you drop a fish in your ear and you can hear all the languages spoken and all this crap, I don't know. They put forth the agenda and the same as YouTube, they put forth the agenda and the subtle little algorithms and everything else. And then, you know, you listen to feedback and you think, I wonder if there's anyone else pissed off about what the BBC have been saying lately. But no, of course, they're just talking about the programmes that they put forth. Oh, I loved your programme. <laughs> you know, and everything is just becoming a self-selling entity. You know, they're just like these globules of shit that just want to keep growing and growing. <laughs> I remember when I was probably about five or six, my grandmother said to me, my English grandmother said to me, if you were born because I was born 9th of January. She said, if you were born, and I was, my predicted date was the 1st of January. 
But there, she said something about they thought that the first child born that year, 1977, was the saviour. So she said to me, if you were born nine days before, we would have thought you were the saviour. She said that to me, I was, I was the age of five or six. And that stuck in my head. But that isn't why I saying I'm the son of man now. It's not it's not the reason, it's just one of these extra things. And I am the son of man. Say so my my dad is God. The dad of this physical body. Obviously the mum and dad of my soul is the same mum and dad as everybody's soul. We're all children of God. But my physical body was sired by God. So if you reject me, you reject God. And I know a lot of people are rejecting God, the real God. You know, they prefer the God in the Bible. <laughs> <coughs> they prefer that wanker. <clears throat> Stupid, isn't it? I think maybe they seem to think that a God who is invisible and just interacts emotionally is, is not a very good God or something. I don't know. So if I'm the saviour, I've got a saviour. I think I've already done it, mostly. Because I have taken on the truth. Okay, You can look back in my videos. You might not believe what I'm saying about all the things I've come up with. But I have taken it in. Now if it wasn't the truth, the the soul would have rejected it. The soul knows. And you will know when you feel it. You won't know before you feel it. And I've never claimed to know stuff that I didn't, that I haven't felt. If I, if I just thought something, uh, I was weighing it up and I was, it could be this and evidence points to this and that's how I'd say it. I wouldn't say I know it. When you feel it, you know it. So I've taken on the, the truth. Uh, and what I'm seeing coming out with people, what people are getting towards, they're getting towards the understanding that there's this one love. And lots of people say, no, we're all one. You know, Alan Watts said this before. Other people have said this before. And if you, can, if you can feel that truth, that's a big one to feel, that we're all one. But it's only partly the truth. We are all one in the sense that everything is love. Love sustains all. Love will be the only thing that remains. So love is permanent. Love, you, you, you make something you love, it will last forever. So anything loving you've done will last forever. It's almost like created love. And anything that isn't love will be, got, will be gone. Will cease to exist. But love will continue. So we're made of love. And we're sustained by love. But we are entities. And our mother and father, God, is an entity sustained by love, made by love, but an entity all the same. So we're not one and the same with each other. We're all unique. We're all different. We're, we're different angles of love. The, the, Here's the entity made of love, and here's the love sustaining it, but as it sort of comes through it, it reacts slightly differently. And 
it's been going on for infin infinity. But if you can start to feel the truth of that in your heart, my gosh, you are doing well. And I only managed this a couple of months ago, feeling that truth of this massive, infinity, eternal love that exists and sustains us. It was, in my mind it was like, when I was first getting these, these conclusions going on in my mind, it was like, this should scare the shit out of me. This should make my heart pound and race like nothing before. But when I just felt my heart with this conclusion, it was just fine with it. It was just, yeah, it's cool. It's fine. So I got used to it. So it was just the big difference for me. You know, me, I've been a very, very sort of keen, you know, there's individuality, you know, that's something I really, really stuck with. Because I, I had been in this wishy-washy place before, I, I had believed that, yeah, when I die, I'll just be like the drop that, boom, just goes back into the ocean and becomes a sort of thing. And I lived my life accordingly, which, to be honest, wasn't, particularly good and probably quite selfish and my life went downhill because of that so I was very much individuality so this new truth coming on me was 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 a tough one for me but my heart was fine with it and I got used to it and I understood it and it's good I'm fine with it it's, it's great it's great You cannot imagine a better reality than what is. The way I saw it, love figured out a way to make it awesome to exist. To be one of these entities. To, to have a piece of the pie. It is a very, 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 very big pie. If it's not infinite. There's something the brain can't really cope with, you know, how how could it have always been? <laughs> how big would that make it? If it's been growing, but it's always been, then how big is it? You know, so I can't get to the end of that. I can just say that it's very, 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 very big. Because otherwise you've got to start involving cycles if, if you want to use the brain for stuff like that. Uh, you know, and there, I think there are always going to be some things where you can just say, right, I'll experience living for, say, another thousand years or whatever, and then I'll think about that again. You know, there's plenty of time to be considering these things. Perhaps they're not so you know, immediately important to figure out now. I mean, the Chinese, the Chinese, they, they you know, they're all, they do all right with their Taoism and stuff like that, but they haven't got God. They don't involve God. Now, how many people individually in China maybe do secretly think to themselves, yeah, there is a God, you know, something made this universe. Something must have done, you know. I don't know, because I don't know many Chinese people. The only Chinese people you see over here mainly are going to a place called Bista Village, where they buy the uh, branded handbags and shit, and they take it all back to China. That's, that's the only ones we see, and they're obviously the rich ones. So, I think that's my rant mainly done.
Bye.